All right, YouTube. Today we're taking a look at the parallel axis theorem. And to do that, we're gonna put a solid cylinder on the end of a rigid rod. And that cylinder and rod are gonna rotate around a point up here, which is some distance L away from the center of the cylinder. Now the parallel axis theorem tells us the total rotational inertia when we rotate an object like this cylinder around an axis which does not pass through its center of mass. Now if you want to see this entire equation derived, just click up here. Now typically you're going to have a situation where you have actual numbers given to you in a problem and you have to solve for the total rotational moment of inertia, but it seems a little bit useless to give you specific numbers here. I'm just going to do this in variables and show you how they fit into this function. Now anytime something rotates around an axis which doesn't pass through its center, we're going to need to use the parallel axis theorem. And to better understand this, I want to take this rotation of this cylinder around this point up here and break it up into two separate motions. So we have to view the rotation of this cylinder around this axis up here really as two different rotations. The first rotation being the rotation of this cylinder around an axis which passes through its center. And the second being viewing the cylinder as a point mass, which is rotating around some central point, which in this case would be this pivot point up here. Now I understand this is hard to visualize, so don't worry, I brought visuals. Now what we have is a cylinder on the end of a rod. Now I understand the cylinder isn't solid, we'll have to just get over that one. But you'll notice as this cylinder or this wheel rotates downward on the end of the rod, as the wheel moves this way, you'll notice the wheel actually turns and you could view it as though it is pivoting around this point right here. Additionally, the cylinder is rotating around this point up here, this pivot point, which I'm anchoring this entire assembly by. And so really what we have are two different rotations happening at once. The rotation of this wheel around its center as well as the rotation of a point mass on the end of a lever. Now realize, mathematically, the parallel axis theorem is nothing other than the summation of the inertias from these two different rotations. Now we know the rotational moment of inertia of a cylinder around its center of gravity is given by 1 half mr squared. And if you want to see a video of where this comes from, just click up here. I've got a video explaining exactly how to derive this. And then we have the rotation of a particle around an axis, where the inertia of a particle is given by mr squared. And again, I get a video for that one too. So going back to the parallel axis theorem, all we need to do is plug in our values for the inertia of our cylinder around the center of mass, and then add to it the inertia of our particle. Now we do run into an issue here where we have r the radius of the cylinder and then in this term we have r the radius or the distance between the center of mass and the actual pivot point, which in this case was some distance l away. So in the parallel axis theorem we refer to this as md squared rather than mr squared because that can become confusing having two different radii in the same problem. So now going back to this situation, our total inertia it's going to be given by 1 half mr squared plus m times, in this problem I listed the distance between the center of mass and the pivot point as L, so we'll call that m l squared. So I hope I've taken some of the mystery out of the parallel axis theorem, where it comes from, and how to apply it. And on that note, that's all for now.